Hey everyone, Duke Nuke 3 d here with another mask in my collection to review, and as promised, this is the Chinese People's Liberation Army. I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it's rare and it's experimental, so I'm going to review it anyways. So, again, I don't really have a lot of info on this. Basically, a bare minimum. Uh, all I know on this is that it is currently being tested and evaluated by the PLA. Um, they're pretty much... All of these that are on the market right now in China were bought as a lot of X. They're basically surplus. These are not, I did not get this on issue. This one was definitely used. When I got it, it was covered in mud and it just had a whole bunch of gunk everywhere, little bits. Uh, there's scratches here and there and the lens has got discoloration spots from something. So this thing was definitely stress tested, uh, given some sort of stamina test. So I don't exactly know what purpose this would have served and we don't even have a confirmed designation on this thing for the time being i'm going to refer to it as the fmj 09a just because it shares a lot of similar hardware to another experimental mask currently being evaluated called the fmj 09 but outside of that we, re we don't really have a connection as to the origins of this thing and its intended purpose so Starting off here, let's uh, get into the carrier, which is, I assume, the same carrier used with the FMJ-05 and subsequent Chinese military masks, as it's made out of a very cheap nylon. It's quite a step down from previous Chinese bags, where the older ones were made out of a rugged canvas and seemed a bit dur more durably made. This one seems really, really terrible quality. Uh, you got a nice shoulder strap here, which is, again, out of, out of all the Chinese carriers I've handled, the shoulder strap is always the most durable part. Uh, you have no waist strap, but you have these tie cords, um, which, you know, there's an excess inside the bag, and you pull it out through this, these grommets, and you tie it around your waist, and that's as good as it needs to be. And there is no external markings anywhere or any outside pockets. You have two patches of Velcro uh, to open the flap, and then you have uh, two extra, or four extra, I should say, the Velcros to form a gusset to prevent any dirt and moisture from getting in the carrier while the flap is closed. And then inside, again, a bare minimum, absolutely no markings. You have a pocket on the side here for whatever accessories you may have with the mask. I, there's nothing in here. And then you have a larger pocket over here, which I can't really imagine what it might be for. Perhaps some sort of gas poncho or something like that. I, I'm not entirely sure. I currently have the bag that the filter came in, which uh, is not a military issued filter, it is another uh, industrial filter, just like the one that uh, Moulage got with his MF1A, same packaging with a Draeger Panorama Nova clone on it and a bunch of Chinese writing that I cannot read. Uh, moving on from that, we have the face form here, which I cannot confirm actually came with this mask because it does not line up with the nose cup at all and does not seem to be a proper fit with the size and shape of this mask, so I'm just going to have to assume that he pulled it off of another mask uh, with the filter intact with it, so I'm not really sure where this face form came from. I, again, hype, uh, I'll probably uh, contact you about this because I have no clue if this actually came with the mask or if this just came with the filter you sent with it, which... Again, I don't really think is original to this kit, given the, uh, you know, the fact the mask was issued. I wasn't even expecting a carrier to come with it either. I think the uh, carrier might actually be a separate part too, considering how new it looks. But anyways, here's the filter um, I have with it. This is just another Chinese industrial filter that's, you know, the same shape and size uh, as the typical Chinese military filters. The only difference being that this has a bunch of labels on it uh, indicating what threat it's uh, specified to protect against. Uh, this one might be another aerosol natural vapor filter. I'm not entirely sure. I have to compare it to the coffee can filter that I got with my uh, my Type 64B, which thankfully now I don't. Uh, I have a proper military uh, coffee can to go, to complete that kit, but that's a that's another story. Uh, this filter is dated January 11th of 2019, so a very recent filter and definitely within its expiry date and potentially usable. Um, and now on to the mask itself, because there's a lot to cover with this. So looking at it externally, uh, you can see that it is definitely a panoramic mask. It is sort of a clone of the Czech CM6M or CM6 series masks with a lot of influence from the Draeger Panorama Nova as well as the 3M 7800 series, or yeah, 7800 series thrown in. Um, I'm not going to point out exactly all what this mask takes inspiration off of. I'm just going to point out its individual details. So you got a nice full view panoramic lens, no issues there. Uh, interesting thing about this lens is that it's sort of recessed. As you can see, there's a recession in the actual 
lens to be closer to your eyes, and this may be due to allowing uh, better vision through sights and optics and things of that nature. Uh, it is a five-point harness, uh, but it is not a terrible five-point, just your typical run-of-the-mill five-point harness. It has a, a similar hood seal periphery st uh, hood stop here, uh, similar to the S10 mask, and then also, like the S10, it has a permanently affixed side voice emitter on the side to which you can definitely attach a Klansman style microphone to this, but uh, I'd, I'd, I'm not sure what type of microphones the Chinese had, if they were a copy of the Klansman system or what, but yeah, you can attach a microphone onto this. Uh, and then also there is a 40 millimeter side port here, which I, I have not tested to see if it could fit NATO. It, it might be able to, but it looks like it's mostly threaded for Gost. Um, not really much else to say externally. You have a, uh, a very, very comfortable mesh skull cap harness here. This is one of the most comfortable mesh head harnesses that I've ever worn. It even beats my, uh, this is, despite being a five point harness, this is actually more comfortable than my, uh, Finnish M95 in terms of, you know, head harness wise. But, uh, and this is also a very comfortable mask. The main issue with it is that the nose cup, as you can see, is entirely too small for Western faces and it is currently getting scrunched up by my display head. Um, but aside from the nose cup, this is one of my more comfortable masks in my collection. Uh, final note on the exterior is this strange um, combined voice emitter. Actually, no, it's not combined. It's a separate voice emitter and outlet valve system, which is a step away from the typical Chinese design. That They sort of go on and off of patterns where they either have a conjoined voice emitter outlet assembly or they have a, t a separate voice membrane and outlet valve. And this is certainly the latter. And this is one of the similarities that this mask features alongside the FMJ-09 um, because the FMJ-09 uses this exact same uh, assembly, more or less. And that's really all there is to see externally. The head harness buckles are pretty simple. They're all, the straps are all elastic. Uh, there's no clinch tips, just folded over and sewn. I think the same harness is used on a lot of Chinese industrial masks as well, but I could be wrong. Uh, a lot of bootleg Chinese masks. So I will remove the harness, or, or undo the harness, and invert the uh, head pad and so you can see inside the mask and kind of give you a review of that. <sighs> give me one moment here, folks. Because there is a few more interesting details to this mask, which really honestly surprised me. So, flipping the mask inside out, one thing you might have noticed by now is this thing up in here. And this is almost definitely a mount for optical inserts. Uh, I do not know if it can, if there's a specific set of optical inserts that is meant for this mask, or if this can simply fit any old pair of glasses. Given the length of the uh, the screw assembly here, that this bracket is a attached to, I could imagine that this thing could fit a wide variety of spectacle frames inside of it, so long as the ear frames are removed. Uh, you have a very comfortable periphery face seal, very wide and broad, but not as wide as the PMK mask, so it is definitely, you know, prominent enough to create an adequate face seal on most ty different types of faces, but it is not overbearing like any Russian masks. And again, the nose cup is pretty basic, and it is almost a an exact clone of the 3M7800 style nose cup, but not entirely. Uh, you may notice that it has, that even today, China is still using those ancient green rubber voice diaphragms that they have been for the past 40 years and, and ongoing. Uh, it has a little groove in the chin cup there for, uh, you know, draining any moisture and sweat. Prying that back, you can see the outlet valve, or hopefully you can down in there which is a pretty typical disc style valve with the, uh, or mushroom style. And then over here you can see the inlet valve for the threads. And then over here, I don't know if the camera will pick that up because it's kind of dark, um, but there is the side voice emitter. Really nothing else to see inside. And one of the more peculiar things about this mask is there is no size stamps or markings anywhere on this face piece. The only markings that are on it are on the lens frames, which I don't know which way it goes around. I'm pretty sure it's this way. Hopefully the camera can see that, but there are, uh, the only markings on this mask is literally on this lens frame and nothing else, which really adds to the peculiar qualities of this mask. It just, this whole thing is a mystery. Oh, well, one final thing. I did not, I forgot to mention this when I had the harness inverted. You probably will not be able to see this just because of how freaking tiny this is, but inside, just below the voice diaphragm, uh, right, uh, where is it? It's somewhere in here. There is actually a microphone connector inside this thing somewhere. Uh, if I could find it, that would be great. I don't know where it is now. Uh, it's in here somewhere. Um, I can't find it now. There is actually a th very, very small three-prong microphone connector somewhere in here. Okay, this is weird. It's like disappeared now, but 
Uh, let me try removing the nose cup. Because I know it's in here. Ah, here we go. Yep, yep, the nose cup was hiding it. Yep, right down back in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's off to the left underneath the voice diaphragm in between the outlet valve, but there is a three-prong microphone connector inside there, which is weird because you don't see any external areas for this to stick out of. It's I mean, it's there. If you remove this cover, it's underneath there, which means they would have to either pass a wire through this or maybe they had a separate cover that would accommodate a microphone. This thing is really a mystery, and I don't know what the hell they were trying to attempt with this design, but... It's really fascinating to me, and I'm absolutely thrilled to have it, because this is the first time one of these has been in the U.S., as far as we know. I am the only American, or, or just anyone outside of China, for that matter, at this current point of time, to own one of these masks, because these are very new, uh, still being tested and evaluated, as mentioned before, and just overall a very intriguing design. There's nothing to write home about with the design, but it's just very fascinating, the unique features it has. So... That being said, there's really nothing else to say about this. I've dissected it as much as I can. Uh, I'm Duke with 3D. If you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, or any possible additional info on this mask, please feel free to drop any comments below, and I'll see you all later.